Good morning, good morning, good morning. We have another beautiful, bright, sunshiny, blessed day. I know it's raining here, but the sun is still shining. It's, it is so uh, majestic when you're flying in those airplanes and you can go above the clouds and you still see the sunshine. And Isn't I that amazing? That isn't it amazing enough about but the amazing majestic beauty of the Lord? And that's why I always say if it's raining here, the sun is still shining. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Whew. I'm a little tired. I'm mentally kind of drained. Mm -hmm. I need me a good week off to do nothing, but seeing that though I can't get it. It's well, always... sometimes you, you just have to take it. Uh, well, yeah, I thought if I'd have made it to Alabama, I would have had it, but I didn't make it. So mm -hmm. somewhere down the road, I'm going to make it. We all take some a day off and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and just do nothing. Right. But anyway, we're going to start with this my nice little song. <laughs> and, and, I couldn't come up with nothing else, so it's always fitting. I this, see sometimes you try to get me the lead. I ain't taking no lead on no song. <laughs> I understand. I'll, I used follow to you. Either. I used to with neither, but uh, anyways, this little light of mine, and I'm going to let it shine. This little oh, light, light of mine. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna let, let it shine. shine. Let it let shine. Let it shine. shine. Let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. Hey. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna let, let it shine. shine. Jesus I gave it to me. me. And I'm, I'm gonna, gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Everywhere I go, I go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let, let it shine. Everywhere, Everywhere I go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let, let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. All right. Okay. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right, next we have a reading of the Word of God coming out of Psalms, chapter 91, verses 1 through, I think it was 16, yes, yeah, 16, 1 through 16. Mm -hmm. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the error that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and shall and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall be no evil before thee, Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest they dash they, thy feet against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him, and I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy and show him my salvation. 
May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Shall we pray? This morning, our kind, gracious, and heavenly Father. Father, we, first of all, we say, Lord, we thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Those are bountiful blessings that you have bestowed upon all your people, and we thank you. Father, we thank you because you touched our hearts and our mind and tell us, to, yes, that we are enable us to come out to the house of study one more time. This may be the last time, we don't know. But Father, you gave us this day Thank and we're going to praise you with our total beings. And then Father, we ask you just to bless each and every one of us individually and collectively that who are present and tuning in from around the world. Father, we are all of your created beings. And Father, we thank you for loving us so much. Then we're thanking you for making it possible. When we can't go into a physical building, we have the means to come together in worship. And Father, we thank you for answering our prayer as we are praying it in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen and amen. Okay. I'll say this. I hope we all had a bountiful, wonderful, Physically feel and spiritually feel Thanksgiving. <laughs> and it's just Kate and I was just talking. We still eating turkey and dressing. And, I, and, and, I and I gained three pounds. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. I, I had to go work off a little bit of mine yesterday at the pool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. I tell you, but it is, that's, that's what those holidays together come together to worship and be with family and friends and just eat and enjoy. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But nevertheless, we have another lesson. And we're still in the book of Ephesians. And the title of that lesson is God Give Tools for Our Protection. And I'm in Ephesians. Uh, our lesson is coming out of Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verses 10 through 18, which is talked about the whole armor of God. And our subject, subtopic is the tools to withstand injustice and evil. And boy, don't we have a lot of, mm -hmm. <laughs> we have a lot of it around mm -hmm. us today. So if I can just do a brief recap of where we are, we've been to up to here. And from unit three, our theme was, we as believers are God's artwork. So thus far, we looked at God's artwork by him choosing us and as his chosen people. Then we learned that Christ is wisdom. And if we are gonna get wisdom, get godly wisdom because his wisdom supersedes our little wisdom, okay? Then we looked at God's handiwork and we explained how and why we are God's handiwork. And, and why we are being chosen to be God's handiwork. So this brings us up to today's lesson when it tells us that how God provided for our protection as we carry out his assigned duties or tasks. And he gives, this lesson gives us the tools that we are to use for our protection as we carry out our assigned work. Okay, now let me say this, as I'm getting ready to start. We live in a fallen world and sin and evil is all around us. And it causes, uh, we try to protect ourselves physically by we have, locks on our doors, we have all kinds of cameras and we have bars on our doors and windows. And many of us has a, a firearm in our house, all for our protection. <clears throat> and our true protections come from God. And it takes into the, the first verse of the 91st number of Psalm, when it said, we find ourselves and this sanctuary of his tabernacle paraphrasing and we are kept by him 
And I want to say this. We are limited in how we can protect ourselves. But God is unlimited in his protection for us. And him being all knowing and all powerful, he knew that sin was gonna get more rampant and worse in this in this in our world. And it is because things are happening today that honest to God's truth. I never in my wildest days when I was a kid coming up that it would be this mad bad. We have open same-sex marriages, we have uh abortions on the rise and they're thinking that's a birth control we have so much hate in our uh political system we have so much hate in our streets and our schools where our kids can't go to school and feel safe mm -mm. it's just bad it's just bad and we and i me personally and I, and I can attribute this to this and i'm looking at my childhood we went to school and we prayed. We had a devotion every single day we walked in that school room. Devotion and pray allegiance to the flag. None of every that Every single day. That is, is, that's taboo now. And yep. when you take God out of things, Satan is, he, we open up the gates for Satan to walk in and he is, he's in and he's wrecking havoc. And that's what his, that's his duties. That's what his, that's his duty is to, to steal, kill, and to destroy. And let me say this. He has really taken hold in our society. But I, 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 I'm telling you, in everything that we try to do, and we don't put God back into it, we're leaving him. We're trying everything man know how. But saying, I got to put God first. I got to get back to the basics. And once, and I'm a firm believer, and Ms. Caden, you can attest to this, that we always put God first. When we always. sit down to eat, mm -hmm. we had scripture. And That's them right. old people didn't have as much education as we have. But they, they, just they had the most sense. Us, <laughs> it just kind of all it like it is. They had common sense, mm -hmm. and they taught us the scripture because we had to learn a new Bible verse every day and say it at the dinner table. That's right. And Dad was at the head of the table. We didn't eat until he got home. That's right. He blessed the table. That's right. He blessed it, and we went around saying each one of us saying our Bible verse that we had learned. Right. See, and what's my point here is they knew God. They acknowledged him for who he was, and they made sure that their children knew God too. Mm -hmm. But now it's hard to find so many families that they do those things. They sit down at the dinner table. Dad is at the head. The kids are saying the Bible books. And when they go to school and at there, there is no devotion in school. And, it, and, and I've been in the school system, and it is terrible. It's like the zoo. Mm -hmm. You'll find more places to come in the zoo. And, and I'm, just, it, I'm just telling you how it is in these classrooms. And I, it, it's a shame for where we have come from, simply because we've taken God out of our lives. Right. You know, the church. The school and the home used to be on the same page when it came to God. Mm -hmm. They always. So now, and, and let me say this too. Those people back in my young days, and I wouldn't want to be a child today <laughs> because they have more problems than we have. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can't have watched the news without some. One just not just one, but two or three killing. That is just ridiculous. We we because we living in this society that we are in. Mm, some people used to think, oh, I live here, that it's not gonna happen. Not so no, not so much now. It's happening everywhere. And you can run to the suburb and think they don't do it that way. They have to do, you just don't know about it mm -hmm. <laughs> because it's not as important as much as it is in the inner city. But it is happening because sin is everywhere. He doesn't care who he get after. But, and I'll say this, and I'm getting into 
that God and his all knowing and his wisdom knew when they took him out of first place, these things were going to happen. And he said, I'm going to let it happen to you until you come to your senses and put me first. Mm -hmm. But in that lesson, he tells us how he gave us the tools for us to protect ourselves. And I'm talking about we as Christians, because the sinner don't even know that he needs protection. And I'll say this going off the bat, is that the heart and the mind is the epicenter of all of the wickedness and the sinfulness that we have going on today. Okay, now that me. So I'm gonna have well, I want to ask a couple of questions. One is how do we resist evil force that seeks to undermine our peace and our unity? And I can give you one good answer. <laughs> I can give you one good answer right now. <laughs> but let me ask it, uh, well, let me just say this then. The armor of God, and we're going to talk about it, strengthen us believers to withstand all of these evil forces that we see that's threatening our peace and our unity because Satan does not want a family, not even the church family, to come together in peace and true worship. He doesn't want that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, He doesn't want that. But So we have to be firm and stand to and all say, you're not coming here today. I'm going to be here, and God is here, and you are no match for him. You might can outdo me, but I'm going to stand on him. My <laughs> other question is, <laughs> yes, ma'am. My other question is, why is it important for Christians to stand firm on God's word? Remember who we are and what he, God chose us. We didn't choose him, and he chose us for a purpose. So we have to be equipped to fight the fight that we are fighting. Now, remember I said that what all of this wickedness and evil as we see this manifested, it starts in the heart. And if you think on these things long enough, you begin to act on. Mm -hmm. So you have to tell, say, I get all this negative out of my mind. Then it's, it's valuable. We all look at that. Why is it for Christian to wear God's spiritual body armor in a world of oppression and injustice? Ooh. It's those two is so prevalent today till it really sickens you. And if you keep looking at it, it, it really gets cause your peace to be disrupted. And I refuse to let this stuff I see disrupt my peace. I need my peace with God. I need to stay in tune with him. Yes, but it is, can be troubling. So how can we use God's tool to promote a more just and peaceful world. Okay, let's just get started. <laughs> let's just get started. Let's just try to talk about the first question. And then we're at verse 10. And how do we resist the evil forces that seeks to undermine our peace and unity? Well, 10 tell us this. First of all, we got to be strong in the Lord and in the power of God's strength his might because we are no match for satan in our own strength so we are fighting a fight of a force a spiritual force that we can't see only in the manifestation of it of his followers you know satan has some followers there's two armies at war here the army of the righteous those are gods and the army of the unrighteous or the evil, and those are controlled by Satan. And he has his minions, and they're doing and thinking all kind of wickedness and evil to uh, cause chaos. And then you see our society is filled with chaos and, and hatred and all kinds of violence. All kinds of violence. Let me just... See if we I can say this. Remember this shooting we had at a Walmart over in uh, Virginia? Mm -hmm. For the supervisor. Supervisor. So yeah, and went and just went nuts shooting. Because it, they sang now, the interview one lady said, because 
he didn't he didn't want to make the decision of opening up more cash registers. That was his choice. <laughs> that's I mean, if that's your job, if it needed. Do you want the people to be lined up down the aisles trying to pay for this stuff? That's money coming in your store. Mm, 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 that to me was, yeah. was an easy decision uh, yeah. to make. Mm -hmm. Just open up to keep some more cash registers. But I mean, I'm, I'm making that point because he, I, and I said, it has to be something more than that. Why would he just want to? That's not a hard decision as part of being in management. You have to make tough decisions. That was not that's a right. decision. Oh, That's not a tough decision. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Any layman could have made that decision. Uh, really? And I'll mm -hmm. say it this way to bring the bill home. My great-grandbaby Brooklyn would have made that decision. All That's she right. Know how to do, how to do right. it. Set them look wide by wide eyed and smile sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you, you need them? more cash registers, open, open them. Open them. Open them. Yeah, you know. And then this other thing, that, uh, this shooting at this gay bar out there in Colorado, who's going to make him, who did he did decide to make himself judge and jury just because of those people's lifestyle? That's, That's right. between them and their God. You That's don't know, but they have to give an account, just like all everybody. Daddy. That's right. Have to give an account for his or her action. Mm -hmm. And if he is living the person that they just chose to live that kind of lifestyle, and it's out of the will of God, according to scripture, that's between them, because they're going to have to stand in me. So he didn't have no reason, no right to take it upon him. So I'm not pointing, I'm trying to make here is that world is filled with hate, because my, man's mind is co so consumed by evil and hatred and that he's being controlled by Satan. That's the point I'm trying to make. That's, and so he, 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 he just went and did what he, now he got to spend the rest of his days as a punishment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, we're no match for Satan in our own strength. So that's why it's important for us to stay in Christ. I don't care how rough the situation get and how crazy society want us to believe that there is no God, but there is. And when we put him first, then we'll say like this, and, and let me go to Second Chronicles, the 20th chapter and verse 17 and verse 20, and I'm going to paraphrase him, and, but he said, the Israelites were then a war with their nemesis and they were going to be overpowered. So God told the King Jehoshaphat, you do not need to fight this fight yourself. I want you to just stand still and you will see the salvation of the Lord. King Jehoshaphat, being a believing man, he went in prayer. Mm -hmm. And the next day he told him, said the Israelites, I want you to go down to the wilderness of the uh, Tekoa, the battle is already won. Mm -hmm. What's my point here? When we rely on God and tell God, I can't fight this back. You have to fight this. God is faithful to his word. Yes, he yes. will fight your battle. And he have already dressed us and what we as believers need to fight this fight. Yes, we in a battle, but it is a winnable battle. Mm -hmm. It's already won. Now, Christ did not die for the sins of the world, and the hate that we see is part of the sin. He didn't die in vain. Okay, let me say this. We see that these untruths, commonly known as lies, was all puffed up. And I used to hear Miss Thickpen and said her favorite saying said the lie will be all around the corner and back before the truth get its boots on. Truth may be slow, <laughs> may be slow, just like justice. But when it comes, it stands. Stands right. It yep. and it will stand on its own merit. It doesn't need any help because truth and justice is just what they are. They are of God. God is truth. 
and he's just. You can't take the truth and make a lie out of it. That's what is trying to be done today, but it, it's not going to happen. And nor can you take justice and make it injustice. They're trying to do that too, yeah. but it, they're not going to be successful. Okay. So what we do is we must stand firm on God's truth and knowing that when he tell us, I'm in verse 11. I'm with you. I'll be with you to the end. Now, listen here. We're going to face some relentless attacks from Satan. Seem like they come every day, sometimes more than one a day, different ways, different planes. Of, oh, <laughs> let me <laughs> say this. When I was doing this, a service on Thanksgiving morning, I had this bright idea to play a couple of songs in the beginning and one in the middle. It played fine, but when I got ready to uh, post it on YouTube, it wasn't the song wouldn't play. And I just told Satan, listen, I'm going to put it on hold. I'm going to figure it out, and I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. And you got to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> My point is, Satan and his attacks will come at us in so many ways. And don't think that he don't come after us as believers. We are his prime targets because we already, he already know we over here running around with God and saying, he is my savior, da, 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 da. And he said, I'm going to show you he's no savior. He know he's defeated, but he don't believe that he is. He's just that foolish. But so when God tells us in verse 11, put on the whole arm of God. So you'll be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. God is still all knowing and he's going to always be God. And he knew that we were gonna, he's going to have to dress us for a spiritual warfare that was going to have to be fought not only spiritually, but physically too. Remember I said, things start in the heart. and Because that's our epicenter, the controls, our thinking and our action. If you think evil thoughts, you're going to act evil, do, do some evil things. Mm -hmm. But if you think good thoughts, you're always trying to do some good and to help somebody, to love them all the time. We even love our enemy. We don't like the things that they do, but we love them anyway because they are God's creation just as we are. Mm -hmm. You know, but <laughs> okay. So we just have to tell Satan, listen. You are going to lose this battle. Okay. So now here, verse 12 tells us this. Just who our enemy is, as I just said, this spiritual conflict starts in the mind. And in verse 12 reads it. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness. Who were they? Rulers of the darkness are Satan himself. Okay, and in this world and all wickedness in high places, we just mentioned about how in our politics we see so much hate that's going on, and it is all they try, this evil scheme that they try to do to get in power to harm innocent people. And I just cannot comprehend it. And I'm saying these people had to go to school to learn how to be so hateful. <laughs> God just don't allow you to grow up be that hateful. But hey, when you look at what is happening, Satan is controlling these people's mind and they go to any length to gain power. Mm -hmm. Any length mm -hmm. to gain power. And in some foreign countries, you see where they have a, a dictator or whatever, they always come to power by force or by some violence. Is, is That's not of God. I mean, why is any length to gain power? And I used to tell them over in my old church, you don't have any power in no position. We see that's that kind of mentality creeping into some of the churches that people want to get in position so they can say, oh, I'm powerful and I can lord over you. That's not of God. Uh -uh. No, uh -uh. No. And you are in a position as a servant of God to serve in that capacity glorifying him and not sin. 
Yeah. That, but we see so much abuse of, of what is perceived power, but the true power comes from God. And we have power through his spirit, and we will this, uh, use his body armor that he gave us to fight this spiritual battle that will manifest itself in the natural. Okay. Now, let me kind of move on. And let's ask some questions or comments on this before we move on a little further. Okay. We see here in verses 13 through 17, answer my question of why is it valuable to us as Christians to wear God's spiritual body on in a world of oppression and injustices? Why is it important for us? One, I can tell you this, but I guess I better read because it's just so, it is just so powerful. Is that when we are wearing God's body on, we are letting the world know who we are and whose we are. So we have on his whole armor, not part of it. We are wearing all of it because when we accept Jesus Christ, we do it through faith in him. Okay, what he says. Now, when we have done all we can do to stand, like I said, we are, we are powerless in the face of Satan. But with God, we are powerful. So verse 14, he tells us this. Stand therefore, having your lawns girded about with truth. Listen. Every believer must be armed with God's truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Remember, we are the righteous of God because we have accepted Jesus Christ as our personal savior. He took our unrighteousness and gave us his righteousness. Okay? Now, and the breastplate, it covers in a, in a physical battle, it covers the breastplate, uh, that metal piece that covers on our chest. We see it covers our vital organs, meaning we must cling uh, in a spiritual world. We must cling to the righteousness of God, protecting our vital organs, our hearts, our mind, to make sure we are staying protected. And number uh, other one is that we are to have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The gospel is peace as when and Luke tells us, it said that peace on this day, peace have come to earth. Jesus Christ came to bring the peace of God's salvation because all unbelievers are enemies of God. But when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal savior, then we are at peace with him. We are no longer warring against God, our Savior. Then we have to have on the shield of faith. So we can, and faith, we notice that word faith is a key component in our fight and in our belief and our salvation because we have to have that strong faith. And we have that faith we are able, when Satan is coming at us with all of his wickedness, we'll be able to, to withstand them because our faith is the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. Okay, next, we'll have on this helmet of salvation. Uh, a warrior has on his head a helmet that protects his head. And you've seen our soldiers, when they picture them, and what well, they have on that kind of metal helmet on that head, protecting that head. So we're protecting our salvation, okay, uh, as a protective weapon. And it keeps it from penetrating. Let me forget that. It keeps us from penetrating those arrows of disbelief and false teaching. Because if Satan can get all of, fill our mind with disbelief, that you are nobody, you cannot win this. This is what the society we live in today is what it is gonna be. And we cannot believe that because 
God is all powerful and Satan's days are numbered, a little bit unbeknownst to him. His days are numbered, okay? And we just have to keep believing the fact that God is all powerful. Let me, let's look at it this way. God created everything we see and all that we don't see. He holds it together by his hand. So then why would we take and believe Satan that he gonna come up here and be destructive and there is no way out for us. I refuse to believe that. So my faith, I'm wearing this helmet of faith here, of salvation. I know I've been saved. You cannot make me believe that there is a God. You not can make me believe that Jesus, some over 2,000 years ago, that Jesus didn't hang on the cross and, and die. I wasn't there, but I have testimonies from those, written testimonies from those that were there. So I would tell Satan this. Now listen, Satan, you can just go somewhere else because I got the sword of the spirit. That's God's word. Who is what is true, and it's gonna his truth is gonna last. So you can go on with your sanctified lies and try to defeat us. So we as believers, we have we have our our war clothes on. We just have to wear and use them because God gave us one offensive weapon and that's the truth of his word. His word is the Bible. And when we are fighting Satan and taking the fight to him, we have to use his word and the truth. Now let's say that, let me say this. I know you've heard this is that you have some out there that Paul talked about in his group that false teachers, and you still have them today. They have them as misinterpreting and misquoting and everything of God's word. Because that's what Satan does. He takes a little bit of the truth and mixes it so like he's mixing a cake to you think it is the truth. Until you bite down in it. <laughs> you ever had a cake that didn't uh, soak and cook all the way through and you've been out and it was gummy, so you had to throw it away. <laughs> I did the same principle here when we get down into this half truth until we get there and we find out, whoops, this is not the truth. Not the truth, okay. And then the other phrase is that the grass look greener over on the other side until you get over there. When you get over there, you find that this is this grass is brown. It is about to wither. What's my point? My point is, is that we must know the truth for ourselves, number one. And we're going to know it by reading God's word, meditating on God's word, and let it become a part of us. Then we can really fight Satan because that's our offensive weapon is God's word and tell him, no, this is what scripture says. You know, one thing I found out, truth, I mean, let me rephrase, a lie would not stand in the faith of truth. It will not stand in the faith of truth. Mm -hmm. Let me say this, and it's political, and I don't want to make y'all, but that was predicted that there will be such a red, red wave, a landslide, win everything. Well, they was predicting that on some lies that was far from the truth. Mm -hmm. Well, the red wave, didn't that tsunami that they was predicting didn't come. It didn't come. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and so what did that tell us? Truth wins. And when you can stand on the truth, you're going to be victorious. We will be victorious. So what we are to do as believers is to stand firm on the truth of God's word. And in verse 18, don't leave our prayers because how can we use God's truth to promote truth, a just and peaceful world. 
We keep on praying. God is the one who can change these evil hearts. We praying not only for ourselves, but for our fellow believers and praying for him to change and bring about a change in our society. And let me say this, our prayer is a most powerful spiritual weapon that God has given his people because that's our communication with God. And let me say this, when Satan sees a prayer warrior in constant prayer, talking to God, he knows already that he's gonna have a hard time trying to break that intimate relationship between the prayer and God. Now God, Satan isn't crazy, he might act like it. <laughs> he does, <laughs> but he, so he chooses, uh, he'll divide different schemes to come at. Now he's relentless in his attacks, even though he knows he's defeated. He knows that. Satan knows that only too well. But he will not give up trying. So what we as believers must do is this. Stay prepared and use our spiritual weapon. As we know, we're going to encounter Satan's tax. Our spiritual weapons is designed to win and for us to be successful in this battle. And we must never forget to proclaim the truth of God's word, because that's the only thing gonna stand up, okay? Now, there's power in prayer. And I'll say this, when the church as a group comes together in prayer, there is so much power. And that's power in our individual prayers. And I want to just make a point here is that when the church came together and praying for Peter, released from, from prison, it worked. And the church came together in prayer on one accord on the day of Pentecost. Ooh. Okay. So, and lastly, I want to say this. Let us use our tools because we are fully equipped with what we need to be successful in our spiritual warfare against Satan that will manifest itself in the natural. Any questions or comments? Questions or comments? Since not, we'll close with prayer and get ready for our morning worship service. Father God, I thank you for this lesson this morning. I thank you for everything. And prayerfully that all who hear will know and wear our protective armor that God, you have given us to be successful as we fight fight that we had no part in designing, but we have part in it because being your chosen people. In Jesus' name, I pray this prayer. Amen and amen.